My name is Michael Foll. I am a former United States NASA astronaut. I flew six missions, five on the space shuttle, uh, one on the Russian Soyuz vehicle. I visited the Mir space station for four and a half months, and I was on the International Space Station for more than six months as the first civilian commander of the International Space Station. My mother, uh, when I was about six years old, she took me and my brother and sister to Minneapolis, St. Paul, which is where my mother's from, and hence the, my American citizenship. And we saw John Glenn's space capsule that uh, orbited the Earth for the first time for America, for the United States. And uh, they asked me, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Who do you want to be? And uh, I said, well, maybe a pilot. I mean, like my dad. And uh, then they explained to me this capsule I was looking at, which looked like a burned up dustbin. And um, they said, how about being an astronaut? And I said, mm, no, I don't think so, mummy. Because it looked like a really cramped, burned up dustbin to me. So at that point, they gave me books on astronomy in space. And my American grandma was very educated woman, and uh, she also stimulated my interest. In school, I read science fiction books, great stories by Arthur C. Clarke and Robert Heinlein and others. Again, my mother was giving me these books. Um, it's interesting that we're in the Queen's Library here, and uh, I was at the King's School Canterbury Library and uh, reading a Arthur C. Clarke's 2001, and the English master comes to me and says, boy, why are you reading this rubbish? <laughs> so I, I, I take great offense to that. Um, science fiction was one of the great motivators for me to think about being an astronaut. When I uh, first wanted to be an astronaut, we were right in the middle of the Cold War. My father was carrying nuclear weapons based out of Cyprus, aimed at, I think, somewhere in the Ukraine or Russia. Um, and when I was finally selected as an astronaut in 1987, uh, we still had a Cold War. And so the idea of doing anything with Russia was the furthest uh, in my mind from reality. By the third time I flew, there was talk in Congress of not building a space station freedom, um, a purely United States venture uh, under President Clinton. There was talk of actually um, joining with Russia to build an international space station, whereby Russia launches the first piece of the International Space Station and provides the engines. And then America builds onto that. And then about th three months before we were to launch, we were told, oh, you're going to have a Russian cosmonaut added to your crew. And we went, no kidding, really, who? Does he speak English? You know, what, does he hate us? Does he like us? Uh, his name's Vladimir Titov. And uh, so we have Vladimir Titov being put onto our mission all of a sudden. And we're wondering quite what we're going to do next. And, uh, you know, is he just, how's he going to fit into the, sh into the show? But then they said, and this is getting ready for the International Space Station project. They said, you know, we're going to see if we can bring the space shuttle up to the Mir station. We went, wow, really? And Jim Weatherby, our commander, was really excited about that. We were launched. And uh, we fly up to the mirror, and we hang there just in front of it, 30 feet away, 10 meters away. Um, we make a very clumsy speech, Jim does, about uh, you know, how historic it is. We can't dock with the station because we don't have a docking port. And uh, Yelena Kondakova, a woman cosmonaut, appears in the window there. And she's chattering away in Russian. Don't we, none of us Americans understand what she's saying. Of course, Vladimir, Volodya is what we call it. Volodya is uh, just chattering away to them and on the ham radio. And uh, I asked Volodya, I said, what's, he, what's, what's Yelena saying? And he says, she's inviting you across for tea. I thought I was just gonna, be, I was gonna become a manager of making new spacesuits for NASA, for the space station. Um, I thought maybe one day I'd fly again in space, uh, do a joint, maybe spacewalk with the Russians. That was my kind of dream goal. But Vladimir Titov, the Russian cosmonaut, then uh, goes back to Russia and he invites our crew to Moscow in 1995. And we arrive there and uh, Vladimir gets us through customs and passport control really quickly because he's a hero of the Soviet Union. And uh, we go to Star City uh, where the cosmonauts train and we're all a bit shocked by how dilapidated um, Star City looked at that time. And uh, uh, there I meet a Russian secretary. Uh, she was an interpreter as well. 
and she says, oh, Dr. Falls, so nice to meet you. And I go, I don't, I've just learned to say Ocean Priya. Uh, it's nice to meet you too. She says, isn't it so wonderful that you and your family will be living here for a year and a half and you'll be here in three weeks time? And I went, really? <laughs> I had no knowledge at all of this news. I was now going to be one of these um, seven U.S. astronauts that were to live on the Mir space station in succession, about five months at a time, as a build-up in cooperation towards creating the International Space Station. I have always been excited by stories of exploration, and as a boy, I would—I was in the Scouts as well. Um, I read Rudyard Kipling stories, and I read stories about exploring Africa and part of the whole British Commonwealth exploration ethos, you know, I absorbed as a, as a schoolboy here. And in this library, for example, with the history and the tomes of stories of exploration, it's, uh, it's, it's clearly part of what makes me want to be an explorer. And going into space is a huge exploration endeavor. Um, uh, and just the me going out and doing something is exploring. You know, going to another country on the Earth today is exploring it for you if you haven't been there. And going into space certainly for me felt like exploration. Stepping back and seeing it in terms of human history, in terms of human exploration, um, yes, I think um, my journeys, frustrating as they are for me, that I didn't go to the moon in my career. I didn't go to Mars in my career, which I had hoped I would do when I was an aspiring astronaut. Nonetheless, I think the whole journey and excitement and drama of my space flights, the six space flights, is all, is, is all part of a story of exploration. It's, it's like ships setting sail from the docks of the UK and, um, and it's, it's spacecraft leaving the, sh the shores of Florida and, and uh, <laughs> the plain of Kazakhstan. <laughs> Um, it's all about going out and, and seeing new things, doing new things. Even if you're going to the same place sometimes, uh, for example, the International Space Station, it's still uh, building those blocks, those bricks in the road uh, for exploration to take place. The space station is essential to doing exploration beyond uh, low Earth orbit for the simple reason that we don't know how to live on a journey to Mars. Uh, for that six months period, unless we do a space station project. We don't know how to make the oxygen keep going, the carbon dioxide to be absorbed, the, 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 the water to be recycled. We didn't, we didn't know how to do that until we do, did a space station. Similarly, radiation protection on the journey to Mars or on the surface of the moon. We now know much more about radiation effects on humans uh, during our space flights. Even though in low Earth orbit, we're shielded a lot from radiation um, by the Earth's magnetosphere which of course provides the northern lights, the southern lights for us to look at. Um, so all these steps I've taken in my career, yes, they didn't go as far as I wanted <laughs> to the moon's surface or to Mars, but they're certainly part of exploration. And they certainly connected me personally in my journey um, to the science fiction that I read and I'm still reading. That makes me think about human exploration beyond Earth, beyond moon, to Mars, into the solar system, to the asteroid belt, and then in millennia to another star. <laughs>